Hello folks, this is a follow-up video to the one that I did uh, for the Alice D14 oil and filter change and I also changed the pan gasket. Um, apparently I made a mistake out of ignorance with this oil filter change and somebody caught it on my previous video and left a comment on YouTube letting me know what I should have done differently. So I'm thankful for that because it's something I've never run into before. So with this video, my hope is to correct the problem. When I changed the oil filter and when I've changed this before, uh, this is the third filter that's been on this tractor since I have it. Um, I just took the old filter off, screwed the new one on, and just like I've done oil changes on oh, probably a dozen different kind of vehicles over the course of many years and many changes on them between cars, trucks, uh, lawn tractors, garden tractors, other power equipment. Um, I've done my share of oil changes. But <clears throat> there's something about the Alice line of tractors that I was not aware of. And that is where this filter sits in this um, kind of bracket there, I guess you'd call it. There's supposed to be a center tube that comes up through the middle, about a quarter inch in diameter tube with a hole in the top. And apparently the way Alice designed their engine to create oil pressure, the oil is pumped up through that tube and then filters down through the filter back to the engine. So without that tube there, it doesn't filter properly and it doesn't create the right kind of oil pressure. Now, as you can see, there is a little tube um, here that comes out of the bottom that goes up into the dash, into the oil pressure gauge. Now, that's never worked since I've had the tractor, so I never gave it a thought because some of the other gauges didn't work either. So, But the tractor ran, so I never gave that a thought. But I was told that without that tube in there, it won't create oil pressure and it won't show up in the pressure gauge. So what I have to do is I have to put, I have to pull this off, put a tube in, and then put it back on. Hopefully I can salvage this filter. It took me a while to get it and it wasn't cheap. So hopefully I can salvage this filter doing that. I didn't know about the tube because, like I said, I've never had a vehicle that had a center tube like that before. And even in the tractors growing up, I didn't have Alice's when I was growing up, so this is different. Um, and this tractor didn't have one on it. It was gone before I got the tractor, so I didn't know what wasn't there. <laughs> To verify what the guy told me on YouTube, I uh, went to some um, Alice tractor forums online and did some reading up. And apparently this is a problem, that the tube somehow breaks off or gets lost along the way, sticks into the old filter, because other guys have talked about the same problem. They'd get their tractor and didn't have the tube on it, and they wonder what was going on. So they also said, yeah, you do need it, and they explained the same thing the guy told me, that you need it for proper oil pressure and so on in operation. So I know that that's true, what has to happen. Well, I did more research online, and there was only one website that I could find that one company that was selling these tubes just as an individual part. I mean, I could have gotten this whole assembly, but just as the individual part. But they want $18 plus shipping and handling for a little piece of quarter-inch steel tube. So I didn't order it through that. Uh, did more reading on the sites. And what the, some of the guys were saying was you can make your own with uh, other quarter-inch tubing. One of the things they mentioned was maybe quarter-inch copper or one of the other possibilities that were mentioned was this, a piece of quarter inch brake line. So since this was like a buck and a half versus $18 plus shipping and handling, um, that's what I bought. So I've got to cut the flare ends off of this, of course, or it won't fit. And these uh, connectors, of course, slide off. And then I got to get it to the right, you know, the right height so that it'll fit. I'm not sure what that is. I'll have to measure it as I go.
The other thing they suggested is crimp the top and then drill a hole straight through it like the new ones would have. So I've got to do some fabricating on this to make it work. Hopefully it will. And then I can put it in and put the filter back on and maybe my oil pressure gauge will suddenly work and maybe the tractor will run better. I don't know. Um, but I, it's an experiment for me, so you're along for the ride. Again, I apologize if I misled anybody with the oil change or you noticed that and didn't say anything. Uh, but like I said, I've never had a center tube like this that slips up right into an oil filter before in any vehicle I've ever worked on. Uh, again, as I've said before, I'm not a mechanic. I'm just a guy who lives out in the country trying to save money. And this is a tractor brand that I wasn't familiar with before I bought it. And the fact of the matter is the tractor was working without it when I bought it. I mean, it ran. And I've run it now for three years without this tube in. I hope I haven't done any permanent damage. I don't think so. I mean, the engine still seems to be okay. And it seems to work okay. So maybe it would just work better. I don't know. I don't want to destroy the engine, obviously, with it. That's why I'm doing this rather than just skipping this step. And then from now on, I'm just going to have to be careful when I change out my oil filter, if the tube comes out, to pull it out of the old oil filter and put it back in place. So um, we'll see what happens, but that's, uh, that's the plan for this uh, modification to the oil change to get this tube back in place. And then hopefully it'll work as it should. So stay tuned. All right, so we got the filter off. As you can see, it didn't come off too bad. And also, as you can see, I've cut the uh, brake line to the size that I need. Now, I tried to crimp the end, but what happens is then it flares out with crimping it in a vise. I don't have any kind of crimping tool to do it any differently. Um, and then it's too um, wide to fit into the filter. I used an old filter just to try. I had one laying around here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to try to drill any extra holes. The oil is just going to have to spurt out the top of the hole here, and hopefully it'll work just about. It looks like, uh, from the one that you see online, it looks like it's almost the same amount of oil that would come out, whether it's an open pipe like this or a hole on each side. So I don't know. It's the best I can do at this point. So it's got to be better than it was. I know that I can, if I can fit it down in here uh, as tight as it needs to be, there should still be a little bit of a gap um, you know, at the top of the filter, so hopefully that should work. We're going to give it a try. I think that's in about as far as I can get it. And so now what we'll... Yeah, it's not going to go down any further. So now what we'll do is... Now one of the things they suggested in the manual before putting this on is put about a teaspoonful of oil right here before you try to slide it on. They also recommend in the manual that you don't spin it on, that you just kind of push down gently and rock it back and forth till you get down till you make contact with the threads and the inside threads of the thing and then you spin it the rest of the way. So what the purpose for that is, I don't know, maybe it protects the inside of the filter better. So what I've got to do is I've just got to put a, uh, a little bit of oil right here and then I'll slide it down over and we'll come back to you. All right, well it slid on very easily, no problem. And the slid right down to where the, the threads met the inside threads and I tightened it up. So I think this is the way it's supposed to be. Uh, I Again, it's a makeshift one, I realize that, so I don't know 100% if it's going to work the same way the, the original one would, but I've now got a tube that will push the oil up to the top of the filter so that it can work its way back down through the tray and then back into the engine that way. So next move here, what we'll do is we'll fire the engine up take a look at my oil pressure filter and see if I have any oil pressure now or if I, if some will build. Um, again, I don't know. This is getting a little beyond my uh, mechanical expertise and who knows if that tube that, you know, the tube that's to carry it to the, f to the gauge is even uh, working properly or it could be blocked. I don't know. But uh, at any rate, 
let's see if this makes an improvement. Be right back. Well, folks, look at that. Hope you can hear me. I just had this running in the shop. Suddenly, I have oil pressure according to the gauge. So maybe this engine will run a whole lot better now that I did this. Again, I had no idea that was missing. But we'll see if this improves performance, keeps the engine oil cleaner and the engine working better. Just for one little part. It's pretty amazing. So hang on here, let me just turn this back off. Okay, and you can see it drops back down again once once I turn the engine off. But that's um, that's what it was. I again I didn't know when I got this with the gauges. I know the traction booster thing seems to move a little bit. Obviously, the um, an the antifreeze, the radiator, the temperature gauge, that's never worked, but I've never really had a problem with overheating just once. But And I replaced the amp meter, but that's still not operational because I still have this kind of mix going on here between the 6-volt generator and the 12-volt volt battery and, and the rest of the electrical system so until I can get to the point of replacing the 6 volt generator with a 12 volt alternator I don't expect to see much out of the amp meter but at any rate um, at least not to show charging like it should but the good news is the oil pressure gauge now works obviously it's putting oil pressure through uh, the system the way it's supposed to the system is pressurized the way it's supposed to Time is going to tell. I'll have to use it for a while and see if I notice any difference. Um, but as I said, I used this for a few years without that tube in place. This gauge didn't show me anything, but the tractor ran. So who knows, maybe they just make these old Alice Chalmers so darn tough that <laughs> you can't destroy them even if you want to. I don't know. But at any rate, I'm happy for the advice that that individual who commented on the other YouTube video gave me. It kind of steered me to read up more information uh, read up on more information about the tractor and how it operates properly design how it was designed to operate properly so hopefully this will improve uh, improve it and I'm glad for the help I always welcome your comments on my videos I'm not an expert on just about everything <laughs> uh, I just am fumbling along trying to do the best I can asking advice from people wherever I can trying to do as much work myself as possible to save money and to make the quality of life out here in the country as good as it can be um, by and yet still living on a shoestring so I appreciate you watching I hope that you I will try to put the link to this video on my previous one so that hopefully if people see the other one they'll come to this one too uh, and see you know the update on this so at any rate, I appreciate you watching. Please spread the word to family and friends about our site if you're interested. And please tell everybody to subscribe. Thank you for watching.